Hello everybody, my name is Tiffany and I'm the Tipsy Artist and today we're going live to teach you how to paint this beautiful painting called Welcome and it's just a great way to welcome in the new season and also place it in your house like in an entryway or in your dining room or kitchen. Really bright, really pretty, but definitely a very beautiful fall painting for sure. And I'm going to start by talking about the traceable, that's what we have here first. So. Um, for those of you who've been painting with me for a long time, you know that we've been very uh, template driven um, and I've got a lot of traceables that I'm using now because I'm just really falling in love with them and they're super easy to use. So this is an example of what this looks like. And then I've got the graphite paper um, underneath and I've already got that place down ready to go. I make sure that the graphite paper is dull side up and then also the shiny side is down. That will allow the transfer to happen on the canvas. Mwah. Thanks, honey bear. My, <laughs> my honey bear's blowing me a kiss. And hi, Larry. <laughs> Welcome. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I like to go ahead and get started with a colored pencil here. Uh, so that way, the magic in that is that you can see where you have already traced. Otherwise, you're going to find that if you use a pen or a pencil, um, you'll find that you'll end up tra retracing a lot of the same areas over and over again because you just can't see it really well on the black. So this helps a whole, whole bunch. And let's see here. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I've got mine all ready to go kind of right next to the canvas edge here. Probably won't do this shiplap. This is made way up high so that if you are using like an 11 by 14 canvas, this will also work on 11 by 14 as well. So you can just make this fit into a bigger space as well. I'm working on eight by 10 today. So I'll probably just use this line here for my shiplap. And the shiplap is also really optional. You don't have to use that if that's not your thing. But I do know that shiplaps pretty popular, so still happening. So it's just a nice little fun detail to make it look kind of like a rustic farmhouse here behind this beautiful little floral, fall floral. So basically shiplap is just, well I think a lot of it just, it, it's just wood that comes across there. So basically what that's representative of. And typically when I use it in my paintings, I'm trying to get that look of like an old weathered wood look is what I'm usually going for. That rustic decor, farmhouse decor, that's what I'm going for. One last one in here. And it certainly doesn't have to be very perfect because again, this wood can be kind of really old and worn. All right, so we have all that done. And then now we're gonna go ahead and work on all the details <laughs> of this design. Oh, thank you so much. I'm gonna let him know that. It says Joe is such a lucky man. <laughs> All right, so these are all going to be like pretty little leaves that are coming in here behind this. So what's exciting to me about a traceable is that I can do all this detail for you. And this makes it really easy on you. So we've never really been able to make templates quite this tiny before. We were always able to get the big iconic shapes done but not all this detail. So this makes for a really fun, easy process. So it's just like, it's just tracing. It's my fun little leaf back here. Oh, and by the way, I've got this secured with just a little bit of some scotch tape but you can certainly um, use masking tape. Doesn't really matter what kind of tape you used, honestly. And the graphite paper is certainly reusable. 
several times. I can usually get several uses out of one sheet. So that's a really nice benefit too. And then even these tracing sheets are definitely reusable as well. So when you get them in the mail, of course you can print off multiple copies. Or if you're just trying to use one sheet, then you can absolutely just use a different color pencil next time. I don't really know how thrifty some people are, so <laughs> I would just print another sheet if it were me. But, you know, you never know. You may be out in the country down to your last sheet of paper or something. And I know about such things because I was raised out in the country. So sometimes you get out in the country. Of course, Amazon has cured a lot of that for people. Since they deliver everywhere and even people out in the country can get a lot of stuff. All right, so this is the sunflower that I'm working on now. But we had really pretty fall leaves um, and then little berries up here. Let me do a little check to see how I'm doing on this. Yeah, see it's transferring nicely. All right, so let's straighten that back out again. And I'll just keep going. This is my sunflower in here. Or, yeah, sunflower. I was trying to remember what this, it's like, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> it's interchangeable though. There are a lot of flowers that kind of look like this. It could also be, that's why I had to look at my color. It could be a, a Gerber daisy. Let me see how I, how I'm doing over here. Oh, still doing okay. And I think a little bit of pressure with your hand is also helpful. That way you know it stays in the same place, just helps keep it on track. There's still, even if there's a little bit of movement behind here though, there's some forgiveness with it because the transfer is just a nice light graphite transfer. So even if there's a little bit of an oopsie it certainly can be adjusted later, so no worries on that. All right, so this is a big stem that comes down, and then I have my lettering to do. So I'll go ahead and come all the way around this. And I always encourage people to remember on their lettering to make sure anytime there's a loop in a letter, make sure you go around the loop so that you do not close off the negative space with each letter. So that's a really important detail. And we're almost done with our transfer. So you're gonna see the excitement here in a second. Oh, I forgot a leaf. Yay, see how pretty? And it works. It works every time, it's amazing. All right, so I've used this transfer paper twice. I probably won't use it again just because it's really starting to get a lot of pattern work, so that's gonna block out any new lines. But I do know people that really use them a lot, like way more than that. I personally don't do that because I have to make sure that you guys can really see what I'm doing. <laughs> so I think it's important. So that's probably about it for me. All right, so here we go. I have this lovely transfer all done. 
And then what I like to do is I like to go ahead and firm it up with a nice Sharpie line so that it always bleeds through the paint and I can relax a little bit more with my painting process. Definitely prefer for two different reasons. Um, it, to me, it provides a more relaxing painting experience and which I think is super important for the therapy aspect of it. And then also just because I, I love the style of it. So I like it when there's hard lines around things that kind of makes the designs gonna pop out in front. So if that's really not your cup of tea and you just really like the softer look that has almost like a watercolor feel to it, um, then you can absolutely just leave it in this stage right here. So that's totally fine. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and start to do this lovely Sharpie look. So basically, this is just me going over everything I've already done. And then it just also helps you as the viewer see this process a lot more too, which that reason is really only important to me and not to anybody else. So, because everything that you do at home is not really for anybody else's um, viewing. I mean, it's your private time, and so you don't have to really worry about that. All right, so these are the little berries that are happening there. And I wish I knew what they were called. I'm, I need to work on my plant identification skills. So I do have an app for that, <laughs> but I don't know what it would do if I actually put it on the painting. That one might be interesting. It probably wouldn't be able to give me a reading but I use it in my yard all the time, so it's really helping me understand what a lot of things are. That's something I discovered during the uh, quarantine time was plant identification app. You spent all that time at home and then it's all of a sudden, oh look, we have a yard. <laughs> Let's see what's happening out here. So it's a pretty cool little app. So you just take pictures of plants and it tells you exactly what they are and how to care for them. And it's been really helpful for us because it's told us things like how toxic they are and many plants we had in the backyard that we thought were really pretty were actually toxic even to touch. And also a lot of plants are toxic for your pets to eat. And we had no idea. So that was really interesting. And then they also tell you different things too, like what kind of troubles they bring. Um, so one of the things I read last night, I think it's called the Killer Hornet Cicada. Now this is not the actual hornet that kills you even though that's a terrible name because it makes it sound like that but they do have a very they're about the size of a locust and they are they have a very terrible sting very it really hurts the good news is they're not very aggressive they rarely bite humans so it is rare they said unless they are provoked um, but they are very loud and obnoxious and uh, yeah, but that's what I was reading about last night. So it was kind of an interesting story and how to prevent those. And apparently boxwood bushes are the wrong kind of plant to get for that. Uh, any idea when I could start regular parties? We have already started. And so you can always go to our website and go look at, it's called studio classes and that's where to look. And we definitely will be adding more to the calendar just as soon as we can. I know a lot of people were waiting until like September or October. And so I feel like hopefully people will be a little bit more um, willing to get out now. So I heard about how all the theaters are opening up. So that's good. Very exciting. I think that happens late August. And then I know a lot of people are kind of coming back full swing into it in September. So I hope that stays on track. Really, really hope so.
Yeah, we started uh, for a while and then we got the big staggering increase in numbers and then people kind of shut back down again and then so yes we are ready to party <laughs> we really man are we ready like in real person this is still a party yay but you know what i mean <laughs> and, I'll, and i'll keep doing this i will definitely keep doing this because i think this type of party is here to stay forever but for sure the bigger classes we're trying to get more of those booked in the fall All right, so I'm doing my lettering here. And again, that quick little note about making sure that you leave your loops open when you do the tracing. So by that, I may take your uh, Sharpie and go around the loop, and that will really help you out a lot. So that leaves that negative space intact, so that will help your letter still look like the letter that you intended it to look like. And here's another little layer of that ship lap that comes across. And here's a little stem that comes down. A little bit of this. All right. So here's our beautiful trace. Very exciting. Okay, so we have all this done. So oh, I'm going to relax a little bit. Not hang on so tight to my canvas. Just trying to make sure it stayed steady during that process. Okay, so now we can talk about really fun supplies. So um, your kit always comes with a canvas and it comes with beautiful professional grade paint, very heavy body paint, so very long lasting on that. And then it also comes with the brush set here too. So our brushes, so we got Mama and then Little Buddy and then Little Bit. And then it also always comes with several sets of uh, traceables or templates. So you'll have, if you've got the traceable kits, then that will come with the graphite paper so you can do the transfer. And I've got monogram letters and a bunch of, like a collection of different words too. Or it'll come with, you know, you can see, it will always come with this traceable too. But I always give you word options. So I give you another sheet with word options. So in case you want blessed or love or joy or peace or like another word here or gather, um, you can do another word here too if you want. And then I also have the monogram, the whole alphabet, so you could do maybe a monogram letter too. So it's really fun, very versatile, so lots of options there. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and get started with my painting. The other thing that I have all ready to go down here is my paint on paint plate. See, so I've got two paint plates ready to go. This one's all ready for mixing. I also have some extras nearby. And then I've got my bucket of water. It always sticks a little bit. There it goes. All right, so just a little visual here. Anything works, just, you know, a, a cup. So red solo cup, anything like that works just fine. Um, all right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get started with the biggest brush. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started with my mama brush or um, if you buy other kit packages on our other brush kit packages on our website which is by the way just tipsyartist.com you can also go with a bigger brush at this point too uh, so this is also my big daddy brush so if you go and do a lot of classes with me you'll definitely recognize big daddy all right so here we go we have got a nice big dollop of the white all right so a nice big dollop of the white and then just a teeny tiny amount of the gold so i kind of i pick it up i do like a pea size amount of the gold and I'm gonna push those two together. I just want a really light creamy color to begin with. Really, really light on this one. Now you can add just a tiny hint of taupe to it as well. So I just barely touch into the black, see, super tiny amount. That gives like a hint of gray in there too, so it cools it off a little bit. So really nice mix on there, but I always keep all that white nearby too, because I'm gonna be pushing that in back and forth here. All right, so I will just sweep this into the background, just back and forth. And as I said, I've got my Sharpie on place, so that will definitely bleed through the paint, which I love. So as I mentioned before, it's that therapy aspect of this. That just makes the process so much easier so that you can just see everything. 
Now, if you're at a paint party with me and we do this, what people will do sometimes, if they already know that they want to do one solid color across the whole background, people who have been along for a long time, they'll actually just paint the whole background, then they'll get the templates, then they'll do all the tracing over the top once it dries. So that's another way to handle that too, that makes it really easy. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just keep sweeping this all the way across. And a couple things to pay attention to is that I always make sure that I go all the way across before lifting off pressure with my hand. That way I don't have choppy brush strokes like this going all the way across. So I do take it continuously all the way across and then I don't lift off until I actually am off the canvas on the other side. And then I keep alternating back in with more white. And then you can even do a little bit more of a touch of that. Be real sparing, but you can go back in with some darker charcoal or a little bit of black and just kind of barely push that in, in places. Make sure it's super tiny amount though, because that can be really overpowering. And then you can also bring in more of that cream too. Just brings in a little bit of a different look in different areas of the wood. So it looks like maybe some parts of the wood have been a bit more aged than others. And I did so much of that darker uh, charcoal on the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and touch in a little bit more with that on this side. Just a little bit more of that. Let me get it up right there. There. All right. Lovely. Okay, so the next thing to really pay attention to with your step is we're going to do color blocking and you want to make sure that you start with all the lighter colors first because you don't want any hard black lines to interrupt your brighter, lighter colors. So sometimes I think the mistake that I see with uh, people at paint parties is that they'll actually try to come in next with hard black lines and then that muddies up all their light, bright colors. And so I think it's because they see the Sharpie and they get confused and they think they have to do that first, but they don't understand that it's Sharpie and not paint. Um, so I try to always really be clear about that. So again, next stage, color blocking, light bright colors first, and then the black is actually all that outlining, that is actually the very last thing that we do. So again, keep it really light and bright, push all this in, and then also, this brush here needs to go into the water. I don't have time to clean it right now. So what I do is I just make sure and rest it in the bucket of water. So that's really important that you do that. If you don't have a chance to clean it out right away, just make sure you rest it into the water because if you do let acrylics uh, set out and dry on a brush, they'll just turn your brushes into sticks. They can dry up pretty quickly. So acrylic paint can dry in about five minutes. So you always have to be careful with that. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work in some color now. Uh, so I will be using a, see what do we got here? Some primary yellow. And then some cadmium yellow. That'll be my first step. And I think I'm gonna use, yeah, I'm gonna use my little bit brush here. All right, so I've got my cadmium yellow, primary yellow. I'll go ahead and push both of those together. And then that will go into this top leaf right in through here. So I'm able to see it. My Sharpie is bleeding through as promised. And that was definitely intentional. I definitely wanted to see that happen, so that's a good thing.
So I'll go ahead and paint into all these little leaves here. I'll come back later with a little bit more of a shadow, but for right now, I just want this bright to pop out. That'd be my very first step here. So again, this is just simple color blocking. No detail work just yet. We want that base foundational color down in the background first. All right, so that's our pretty brights up there. Let's see if I have any more work. Yeah, there's a little bit more I need to do down and through here. So it does extend. to this area here. All right, now next up, I will go ahead and use a little bit of the cadmium red. So this is a really pretty nice warm red. It's great for fall. So I'm gonna go ahead and push this off to the side here. All right, so let's go ahead and push into the cadmium red. And then we'll go ahead and work this. So also, let me just not forget to tell you about this. I didn't actually clean off the brush. Hi, Michelle. <laughs> yes, you've done this one before. <laughs> and I didn't clean off the brush. I'm just actually, I still have it loaded up with cadmium yellow and I'm just gonna push into the cadmium red now. But I actually like the warmer undertones of the cadmium red working through, uh, the cadmium, pardon me, the cadmium yellow working with the cadmium red. So I love the two of those actually working together. So then I'll go ahead and push this into the leaf pattern behind here, because this next one goes to some warmer hues. And then I also, I'm looking back, I think I have a little bit of orange in here, so I'll do a little bit of orange in here as well. <laughs> howdy, howdy! <laughs> How are all the cute puppy dogs? All right, so I pushed in a little bit of the orange as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and work this into that entire leaf. And I'm gonna to touch into all these warm tones here. So I'll touch into a little bit of the cadmium yellow, a little bit of the orange, a little bit of the red. And I'll just do all of those and sweep it into this background here. And still just using my little bit brush. And if it gets a little filled with paint too much so, you can always do a little twist with it in between your fingertips. Rotate it into a nice fine point and that'll help you get into those tiny little areas. All right, making sure I'm staying on track here. So I think, see I don't really know that much about plants as I mentioned before, but maybe this is a maple leaf behind here, and maybe somebody can correct me if I'm just totally wrong. So I don't know, but maybe, and I've got this little flower right here, I'm going to pop in a little bit of red there, and then those little bitty berries, they're kind of like a gold tone. So the puppy dogs are running around the back backyard staring at a tree with squirrels. Squirrels. That sounds like a lot of fun to a dog. <laughs> Actually, even as adults, I think we stare at squirrels. I don't know why we don't have any squirrels back in our backyard though. I think it's odd but that could be because they sense Ira. And legend has it, this is sad to say, but I've heard my Ira has killed squirrels before. It's true, sad, isn't it? But she is fast enough, she can catch them 
But I, I guess they know that about her, so they never come into our backyard. We have had a few brave cats, but then they get chased out pretty quick too. So I'm doing this little thing that I don't really know what it is. I said before, I called it a berry, but I don't honestly know what its technical plant name is. But so that's really, those are fun. They look very fallish. So, all right. So next up, I'm gonna do the sunflower. All right, so now I do want to rinse off my brush because I'm coming into some really light yellows and I don't want all those reds in there. So I will take my little bit brush again. I rinsed it off, dried it off. It's just moist. And I'm gonna go ahead and push into bright primary yellow. Mostly that, and then and maybe a little bit of the cadmium as well. And even a little bit of white too, to keep it really light. All right, so Bailey can catch squirrels too. Yeah, dogs can be pretty fast. We had a, a skunk really close to our yard last night. But thankfully, it didn't actually, I don't know, we never did see it, but it was very close, because oh my goodness, and it was, Apparently it just sprayed something, it was not good. And I saw that, I used to, well I've never really thought about skunks that much until I saw a video of them this last week. And they're super aggressive and they're super fast and they chase people and then go upstairs. I mean, you cannot get away from these, these guys and it's so scary. I <laughs> did not like that at all. All right, so let's talk about the sunflower a little bit. I'm pushing into a little bit of white, a little bit of primary yellow, maybe even a little bit of the cadmium. And I'm still just using my um, little bit brush. And we're just holding the brush just like you'd hold a pencil and just working into each one of these little petals here. Oh no. Oh, so she will catch the um, squirrel Kill him and bring him into the house to show you her prize. Oh no, oh, I've heard, I've heard that's a thing, yeah. We used to have dogs that did that all the time in the country. All right, still working on our beautiful little sunflower here. And again, I'm just kind of pressing into a little bit of white, a little bit of cadmium. Cadmium yellow, sorry, not finished my sentence. <laughs> Look, I just said it again. What is wrong with me? All right. All right, this is so pretty. So these paints, Again, I've mentioned before, they're like more of a professional grade paint, so they have this really beautiful, rich quality to them. So it's really fun to see the difference. Because this is more of a student grade paint, so the paint quality gets quite a bit more pale, and it's quite a bit more vibrant uh, when it's a richer, uh, more high quality paint. So that is a really fun revelation as you start to layer the color on it just it's so much brighter this this way all right so we have our beautiful sunflowers i'm gonna do a little bit of this interior space work in here so let's see that's honestly just a little bit of a shadow happening in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and push into, um, this is, I've already done all my brights, so I'm safe here, so I can go ahead and do a little bit of the dark. 
Oh, you love the new lady watching over Guthrie. Well, thank you. Yes, that is, uh, you know, we haven't named her yet. We should name her. She's, she has no hair. For those of you who do not know what we are talking about, <laughs> I better give you, give more words here. So my honey bear Joe has a vest creation. It's really like a work of art. And he put it on a mannequin and he really tricked out the mannequin too. He put lots of jewels on her, which took a lot of time. But she doesn't have any hair. He left her uh, without any hair, which is fine. She's quite striking actually. Kind of like a Sinead O'Connor look. But at any rate, we put her in our front window. So she is definitely looking out the window. And depending on how you feel about all that, it could be a little creepy to you or it could be awesome. And so far she hasn't scared me to death. You know how that is when you have that human figure in your house and you walk out and you forget they're there. But I think for some reason in that spot, I'm, I'm ready to see her there. But we used, he used to have her in a corner and man, I just kept turning the corner and catching her out of the corner of my eye and she was really freaking me out. So I, I had to move her. So it was, um, she's better now. <laughs> and way out in the open, right by the window where I can really see her and she doesn't freak me out. <laughs> so I needed for her to not freak me out. And so it's much better. All right, let's see. Um, 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 um. Let's do a little bit of some brown. So I'll teach you how to mix up brown. We have our cadmium red. Oh, I already have some on my plate. All right, so let's just do this. So I've got cadmium red and black. So I do a little bit of that cadmium red and the black. And when I put those two together, that will actually make a really nice charcoal, not charcoal, uh, chocolate, chocolate brown. It's really nice dark brown. All right, so that will be this fun little leaf here. And my brush is getting a little bit filled with paint here, so I'm gonna go ahead and twirl into the paint, get that nice fine point again. And then I have a few of these. I'm gonna to have to switch to a smaller brush. So let's mix up more. I wanna make sure I've got plenty of paint here. So let's go do more of that cadmium red, touch of the black. So that gives me more of that brown. And then I need a smaller brush. So let's do a little bit, but one that's a lot smaller. Actually, I don't like that one. Too flimsy. Okay, let's do this one. All right, this guy right here, okay. So I do a little twist here into the paint that will give me a nice fine point. And then this will allow me to do those little loops, little loopy leaves. So I do a little loop at the top. And if you need to help stabilize your hand, a couple different tricks you can do. Like right now I'm kind of resting my arm on my other hand so that kind of stabilizes my hand as I do this. Another thing you can do is just make, watch where you place your pinky, but if you, you know, place it in dry paint and then it can help stabilize your hand and that will help you mobilize the rest of your fingers in a more steady way too. That's another little trick you can do too. All right, so we have more of these little guys up here. And again, this is more of that brown that we mixed up. And the mix on this, if you don't just, you may just have brown paint. So that works well, obviously. Or this is a mix of our cadmium red, which is a warm red, and the black. So it makes a nice brown.
And then I still have just a few little, few little detail there. Oh, and I have little leaves out here too. A few little loopy leaves out here. Beautiful. Okay, so now we can really start to get a little bit darker. We have a lot of our light and brights done. So now it's safe to go in with those darker tones because we, we know we're not going to interrupt those brights. So I'm gonna come in with a little bit more of this black here and I'm gonna just work into the center. Still using little bits, a good choice, or you can even probably use little buddy in here. You have a little bit of room to maneuver. But I'll just go ahead and stick with my little bit brush here. And then you can pounce in a little bit of these brighter colors. So I'm gonna take my little bit brush, I'm dabbing into the gold, or you could do a primary yellow here, or the cadmium yellow, and just kind of pounce, pounce, pounce over the surface here. So that creates some nice texture in the center of your sunflower. All right, really pretty. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the tiny, there's like tiny little circles in our seeds up here. So I'll go ahead and do a few of those. So it's just, just kind of do a little tiny, it's almost like an oval shape, basically right in the center. And then this one, it's kind of off to the side a little bit. You can kind of play with the direction of it a little bit so that they're not all just facing straight forward, you know, kind of give that variation to it. All right, and then I can start to do a little bit more of that line work that happens. So still using my little bit brush and the black, and I do a little twirl into the paint. Remember to keep that little fine point going. So then I'll go ahead and do my outline, and then also this line work up through the middle. So this really helps give me a nice, light, delicate line. So I'll start with the center line and then I do a diagonal line out and up and then I just lift off with a light hand. And then same thing up here. Do a little bit of that outlining. And just coming in with black right now. Starting with those center lines. So lots of little details. And we're gonna go ahead and take care of that outline now. And I also like to come in between my little sunflower because that really helps make those petals pop out to the front. So again, still using little bit, still using black, and I twirl it in a little bit. That will help get me a fine point again. And then I'll go ahead and come around all those little petals. And the brush hole, you just hold it just like you'd hold a pencil. That gives you the nice control that you need. And we'll just take that around all those little petals. So it's just kind of like a dramatic shadow. And it really helps them pop out to that front. And it's definitely a style thing. So this is, 
that part of the painting where some people might choose to not do the outline because you can definitely go for a more softly muted approach where it almost kind of has a look more like a watercolor does in which case you don't have the hard lines that come around the shapes you can keep it soft if you want to and another option with keeping it a little bit softer is not using a black like you could definitely come in with maybe like a darker shade around each petal so like a maybe even a cadmium red or the orange or something that has a darker hue to it that you could bring in same color family but a little bit darker and you could use that to come around each petal too Still just finishing up around each little petal here. And then we have this fun little stem that comes down. And it just kind of gradually disappears because we have this little break for our lettering that comes right through it. Hello, Sean, thank you so much. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the continuation of the stem there. And then I'm gonna not continue on with that. I wanna just go ahead and do the lettering now at this point. So I'll still use my little bit brush and the black paint. And this lettering is pretty thick in some of this area. So to me, it's almost easier just to paint it on. The other suggestion I have is Sharpie first to help stabilize it, and then you could touch it up with a little bit of paint too, or just Sharpie. So that's another option. You can do that too. But the trick with Sharpie is you wanna make sure that you have no wet paint before you start to do your Sharpie work, or else it will kill your Sharpie, and that's very sad. All right, I'm seeing a loop coming up really quick, so I wanna make sure that my line goes around the loop so that I preserve the negative space in the letter. And I stopped doing the branch here because I'm coming in with that O, and so I wanted to make it look, I'm gonna do a little bit more work there, but I don't wanna lose the shape of my O. So I'm gonna fix that with a lighter color that will come in next to it. And then the letter E. All right, so it's getting to be a little weird there. So I'm gonna come in with some of this cream So using that same brush, I didn't even wash it off. I just kind of pushed into it. So it's gonna bring in a little bit of a creamy charcoal color. And then I'm gonna go ahead and come right next to that letter O. Cause I want contrast there. So I don't mind the stem coming up right next to it. But what was bothering me was that it was black near black. And so I was going to lose that firm shape of the O. And I didn't want, it, I didn't want that to happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing here. Just help transition that a little bit. And then I'll firm up that line around it. All right, and then we'll just kind of let that be because again, this is kind of an unnatural thing that's happening. It's just a decorative thing where the lettering comes through that stem there. All right, so I can, uh, in this one, I did a lot more dark work in and around the leaf. You can add a little bit more if you want to do that, or you can leave it really light and bright and pretty. So either way, but if you do want to add more of that darkness, um, then you can just kind of do a few more of the diagonal lines in here to bring in that pattern. So that's kind of an option in there if you like the look of that, or you can just leave it light and bright. Just keep your lines kind of more minimal through there. So 
So again, just little diagonal lines. And you can work back into it too with some of the lighter brights. So we have that brighter yellow. So if you want, you can kind of softly blend in between there. So again, still just using the little bit brush. And I'm gonna touch back up my little barrier, whatever this little thing is. I swear, I'm going to find out. I don't know quite what this little guy is. All right. But he's cute and polish. All right, so that's fun. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna leave this one a little bit brighter this time. I think that's a, a pretty look, a little bit different. Um, then I'm gonna come in with the shiplap. So what's interesting is you can leave it just the way it is with Sharpie coming through. So it gives just like a faint line. That's absolutely acceptable if you like the look of that. But if you also want to come back in with a little bit of paint right over the top, you can. And I recommend taking the uh, Mama brush now. And then we'll do a little bit of a push. I want a little bit of white here in the black. So I'll make a dark charcoal color. And I'll do some firm pressure into that paint. And I want to check my line here. I want to make sure it's nice and thin. And it is. So nice and thin. And then I'll go ahead and do all the long lines as much as I can. Now this brush will be a little bit too big for like some of those areas in there. That's, that's too big, don't risk that. But certainly in this area here, you can go ahead and do these little lines. And then I'll get a smaller brush. I may have to even, this is little buddy. I may have to even go smaller than this, but I've got a much smaller and really thin line. And then one more time with the smallest little bit. Hmm, where did he go? Oh, there it is. Okay, here's my little bit brush. This time I'm gonna load up by doing a little twist again into the dark charcoal color, and then I'll just kind of lightly go over that shiplap line that goes across. And that gets into all those teeny little areas. All right. So yes, I think we're just about done. I can go over some of this do a little bit more of some just little touches of dark lines to help make the design all kind of match with the same style and make some of those elements kind of pop out in front so I'm doing like a light sketch of a line with that charcoal color Coming around these little elements here so they kind of all pop out in front. All right. Very nice. Okay, I think we are done with our beautiful fall painting. Welcome fall. Yay. All right, so thank you again so very much for joining me. I'll have all this available for you on our website, the painting kit, the traceable, all that wonderful stuff to make it super easy for you all to do at home. And we've also got forms now on each page where if you don't happen to see it, can't find it, or you're just in a hurry, just for whatever reason you can't find it, you can just send me a message and say, please help me find this painting I'm looking for, and I'll send you direct links to everything. So I'll help you out that way too. 
I'll be your little personal shopper, so it'll be awesome. So yes, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Y'all have a beautiful Sunday. Yay, hi Cindy. Thank you for being here and thank you so much. Yes, and I will see y'all soon, probably tomorrow. So yeah, have a happy Sunday. See you soon.